Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Judge Dad Verdicts. I am Sean McMillan. This is Rich Morrow, What's my co-host, McMillan and Morrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you. Thank you for being a part of this. We have an amazing, amazing uh, set of stories for you, stuff you won't believe. Um, it's always good when we gather, is it not? Oh, it's always a it's always a party. Last time I I think my stomach is still hurting from our last episode. I don't know if you guys caught that, but if you haven't, you should go check it out. All right, well we'll get us started, man. Oh man, I'll get us I'll get us started. We usually, you know, starting off overseas, so we're gonna do that again. We're going to Thailand today though. Oh god. You ever been to Thailand? No. No, you haven't. <laughs> okay, so you know they have monks and things out there in Thailand. According to CBS News, every monk in a Thai temple was defrocked what? after testing positive for meth. What? Yes. <laughs> a Buddhist temple has been left without monks after all of its holy men failed drug tests. They were defrocked. <laughs> <laughs> and not just any drugs. Oh. They was doing meth. <laughs> they were doing meth. <laughs> I mean, my, the my. DTLA meth. <laughs> the whole monastery was getting high on getting meth. Getting to it. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Except that there are a lot of preachers in America that better be glad they don't do drugs. They said they sent them all to rehab, too. So imagine going into rehab. Well, that, was the, that was the kind thing. <laughs> imagine going to see the whole monastery <laughs> in your rehab. It's like, whoa. He's like, I'm like, I got to question God. What is going on here? That's that's crazy. They said that the temple is now empty. Wow. <laughs> and this, this was in Indonesia? It's Thailand. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, life must be hard in Thailand. I mean... That's, oh, that's that's a little close to home. I mean, in, in in this sense that people think that having a spiritual life or being mm -hmm. spiritual or religious somehow exempts you from doing or being a, guilty of certain things. That and from having to deal with life, yeah. you know, because because I I see drug addiction and drugs. Uh, not not so much as as just like a moral failure, but mm -hmm. but but as in some cases it's addiction, which means it's it's a disease. Mm -hmm. In other cases, it's how people try to cope with life. For sure, right? Um, Usually, it's trying to escape something. Although, if you're if you're a monk, maybe it's how is how you try to climb the ladder. Yeah, I mean, I there's know. no shortcuts to Nirvana, though. You know what I mean? Listen. A lot of people try to. Try to find that shortcut to get there. Why are you laughing? <laughs> because of the way you be looking at me, man. I'm like, this is not, no, this is terrible. But check this out. They were using meth pills that, um, they call them Yaba. And it's cheaper than beer and it's super accessible. So it sounds like something that probably goes on a lot. You know, they have things like. Yeah, but a monk should not be needing to get high. I mean, Does, doesn't that undermine the whole purpose of being a monk? They do use, and I don't know if you remember on one of our old episodes, but there's there's different like ayahuasca and things like that that are a part of religious ceremonies from thousands of years where, you know, these people are high higher than most. Mm -hmm. That's the devil. You know, that's what that is. That's why they that's why they in rehab or jail or whatever yeah. they are. Sometimes they're probably getting high so they can have that conversation with God face to face. You know. <laughs> Mm -mm, don't do that. They're high priests. Mm -mm. All right, I'll stop. That I'll wasn't stop. even funny. It wasn't. They're high priests. You know Tyler that? wrote that one. Yeah, that's something he would say. <laughs> that's that's Tyler's humor. They're high priests. That's Hudson Valley humor right there for you. <laughs> no. No. No, I don't know. I have to take a stand. Okay. So, speaking of stands. No, I'm not done with this. No, we got to. I, I can't wait for you to hear this next no, one. No, no, I'm not done with this. Okay, give me the verdict. You got to take a stand. Give me the because verdict. Because you're supposed to be functioning with some sort of moral code. No, nah, for real. And the moral code is not meth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, a little weed. I'm, <laughs> Maybe. Okay, I'm okay with that, but meth? They went all the way to meth. The hardcore. They went hardcore. <laughs> Okay, now I'm done. Don't y'all do that, okay? Y'all stay away from that. You, end you up ready with, for this next one? You end up like your priest. You thought that was bad. Your monk. I don't think you're ready for this next story. 
You ready? This is a lot of dramatic pause. Yeah, because it's definitely about to get interesting. So, according to NOLA, this is in New Orleans, a former priest pled guilty. Oh, God. <laughs> to obscenity from having a threesome on the altar at Pearl River Church. What? He got caught having a threesome on a threesome? the altar. <laughs> Why? What are you? What? Are you, what? Who chose these stories? These are like this wasn't me. Now, now, I don't know why the devil in me is going to ask it, ask this question, but was it? What was the threesome comprised of? So check this out. It was a former priest, like I said. A passerby saw him and two dominatrices having sex on the altar of the church. Wow! And when they seized, you know, and he actually. Really got busted red-handed. They arrived and they found sex toys, stage lights, a cell phone, and a tripod-mounted camera. So this was very intentional. What? Didn't just accidentally slip into a threesome. They were trying to do First of all, one. he's a priest. He's supposed to be having a vow of celibacy, right? Yeah. The priests are not allowed to, to engage in any of this. And he's having threesomes on the damn altar. They had to replace the whole damn altar. I hope they replace. Can't pray at that one no more. <laughs> <laughs> no, that altar has been defiled. You hear me? By the dominatrix. I feel sorry. I'm not Catholic. But I, feel, I feel sorry for my Catholic brothers and sisters. They've been through That's a, a lot. That's a tough one. They've been through a lot. No pun intended. <laughs> I love all of y'all, okay? Just so you know, I love you so much. And y'all have been through a lot. They've been through a lot. I mean, their history is. But can I just say this? Mm. And I, I'm, I may get in trouble, but I'm grown. Uh oh. Um, this is what happens when you ask people not to have sex. Yeah. Having sex is a natural function, whether you are pleasing oneself or engaged with other people. And when you ask people not to do it, it becomes deeply problematic. Oh yeah. You know, because the urges come out and they come out. And when you have to hide and be duplicitous and mm -hmm. lie, then they come out in all these kind of, you know. And people start doing, yeah. Having sex on the altar with dominatrix <laughs> women. Whooping your ass on the altar. <laughs> Talking about take these lashes for Christ. I, you think he was dressed in his? Don't do that. No, this is already all bad right, enough. All right, we ain't gonna go there. Then. This is already bad enough. Okay, we now, can, now, now you now you got him dressed. We can let him live. I was just curious if you think they were role playing or if clearly they were role playing. But we like you got bad bunny, bad priest. What is this? That that really made him laugh. Look at that. Just because it's so bad, man. We shouldn't even be laughing. I shouldn't be laughing. You're not laughing. I'm laughing. I'm I'm I'm, I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted. Forgive me, Lord. But people are people are people. You know? Yeah, and it's in our nature to be sexual beings. So I I feel what you're saying, and you know that restriction leads to people to doing a lot of different things that they feel like. I don't know. It comes out in different ways for everybody. I know a lot of people way. believe in celibacy. Mm -hmm. I, I don't happen to believe that. Yeah. I think it makes people crazy, backed up. Dysfunctional. <laughs> I mean, it makes people it can it can make people just now now if you're choosing to do it for, for your own for your own reasons and mm -hmm. all of that, and if it's a spiritual journey That's that you're that that can be healthy and mm -hmm. cleansing if you need a season yeah. where you're not engaging and you're just Putting your semen yeah. or your eggs everywhere, just spreading your seed, yeah. Then, then, your then, seed. That, then that's <laughs> see, see, we were doing so well, and then you just went into spreading your seed. I had we had a man in you know. college. We had somebody that our coach literally made us come to, and he told us the reason why we weren't hitting free throws because we was out there spilling our seed. <laughs> 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 and it just came back to me <laughs> that this was what we went through. And I'm like, I'll never forget that. And our coach used to reference that all the time. Like, well, maybe if you went down spilling your seed on that damn Saturday, you probably would have shot better than 60% last night. And it's like, wow. Okay, so where's the connection there? <laughs> I don't even know what in the world just happened. You, you, just my mind you going be, back. You I were traumatized. Back. I was traumatized by that because this is this wasn't just one time. This man came to us for years he has talking a about that. With no, he was serious about I'm, us not spilling our seed. He was a little preoccupied with the subject. He said that was the reason why we wouldn't play him well. <laughs> my point, back to the show. My, my point is um, 
when you ask people to deny yeah. what is most basic about being human, yeah. you, get, you get an example of us acting like something less than mm-hmm. human. You know, and I can relate that to during the pandemic. It's natural for us to be social beings and interact with one another. And when you isolate people, you start seeing all kinds of things happening and trends starting that you've never seen before and things of that nature because yeah. it's not in our nature to be isolated. You know, if that was the case, God would have put everybody here one on one, you know, one by one on earth. Instead, we all. I was together, actually cool you know? with the isolation. I know you cool with just, it. But... Just, I mean, you have a point, but yeah. I'm just saying I was fine with that. But just like what I you were saying, in a healthy I... dosage, you Listen. want that because that's what you want for yourself. Listen. Naturally, as beings, everybody aren't. I was like, welcome to my world, everybody else. Yeah, I see. You know what I'm saying? We came into your Spend world. Spend some time with yourself. Yeah. Some people need it, though, for sure. And apparently, some people need to uh, find better ways to deal with their sexual urges. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. That don't include, you know, uh, sitting up on the, the altar. altar. Getting it on. Yeah. So, moving forward, next story. Oh, according to NBC News, we're going to Canada, by the way, so we up a little north. Oh, Canada. We're going to do a feel-good pre-story after what we just went through. I think we need cleansing, oh, right? Oh, man, made <laughs> land. A Canadian man is dubbed the world's strongest priest, and he set dozens of Guinness. What is all these religious in? stories? What is it's this the about? holidays, you know. Christmas is coming up, but it's, these are like weirdo priest <laughs> stories. We got drug addict, we got drug addict monks, we got freaky nasty people having sex on the altar. This is a feel good one. And now this is this is a priest that's the strongest. What? Check me out. He's the he's dubbed the world's strongest priest, and he set dozens of Guinness book you know, world records based off of his strength. Um, he's doing things like pulling heavy objects such as fire trucks and even an airplane he's pulled before. But he generates all of these views on, you know, platforms like YouTube and he donates to different charities when he wins and competes for different things. Shouldn't so. he be praying? <laughs> Shouldn't he be leading mass? Saying to Dominus. Probably. Shouldn't be saying the mass in Latin or something. I mean, what, I'm, no, I, this is not. This does not make me feel good. It's 2022. 20, People are doing all kinds of different things. And he, that is the problem. But check me out. He raised $70,000 one time for pulling a three-bedroom house. God don't. <laughs> <laughs> God is not interested in how much money you raise. But he's building homes for people in need. Like he it went to, Mm-mm. it was it was for Habitat for Humanity. Mm-mm. I don't know how Mm-mm. he pulled a three bedroom house, but apparently Mm-mm. this priest pulled it. We need to find a video for that. Hold on, how nope. do you pull a house? First of all, <laughs> I don't think anybody's ever done that. This, let alone a priest. Your interest is what's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this with, is why it's on YouTube. Your interest is what's wrong with the world. It got eight million views for a reason. Okay. Eight, eight, eight million people are. Uh, he was pulling an aircraft in that video for 8 million views. He should be pulling the sacrament, the body, the <laughs> blood of Jesus, which is broken, given for you for the remission of your sin. That's what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah. Not out pulling buildings with his teeth mm-hmm. or however he pulls them. That's not what he, I mean. You want to know what it's rooted in and his motivation? When he was 19, he said during this rite of confirmation, he was given a verse from Joshua 1.9. I'm blaming on the Bible. Be strong and courageous. Oh, that's the hell. For no. the Lord your God is nope. with you wherever you go. Nope. Nope. What's the, what, <laughs> Tyler, what you laughing at over there? He's laughing because he picked the story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Be strong and courageous wherever you go. And the Lord will be with you wherever you go. You can literally find a scripture for having threesomes on the altar. <laughs> if you really look if hard you really enough. If you really look hard enough. Okay? There's a scripture for everything. You can find a scripture for defecating in the middle of the airport. What? <laughs> it's a scripture for everything. It is. I mean, it's a scripture. They had airports in the Bible. You get the point <laughs> I'm making. I almost called you. I almost called you the person you were singing in the last episode. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. But, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm all for charity. I'm all for doing interesting things. Mm-hmm. But mm-mm. Yeah, that's... I don't want my priest. Doing that, you ain't Pulling, going to his church, huh? No, you ain't going no. to his church. Okay. I mean, I want you. It don't sound like he hardly at church. That you know? that's the that's, that's the problem. problem. That's you problem. ain't at church, bro. I come to church to get a little word. Because it's, it's like if you want to do that, just be an influencer that you know happens to 
be a little bit more religious. But he already works for the crazy. ultimate influencer. True. Right? That's what he's missing. Yeah. You know, like you work for you, enough. You know, let me say it better, because this is good. But you ready for this? Yeah. Influencers are numb nuts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He works That's for the, he works for somebody who actually has power. Yeah. There's a difference between power and influence. Mm. Go with the power, bro. Let that power, bless bro. you. That was That's good. That's the verdict right there. That was a word. That was a word. That was a word. <laughs> Influencers are numb nuts. <laughs> that part That's wasn't the, the headline. Word. That wasn't Influencers the word. are numb nuts. No, that wasn't the word. That was the headline, though. <laughs> okay. You ready? Let's, let's- Here's another one that said we're going up to Philly. This is almost a but why story. You know what I mean? According to the CBC. A, a but why story? Yeah, because you're going to ask but why. Oh, how okay. Can you I, hear I thought, this? I'm like, another, another butt story again? No, nah, no, nah, it ain't about booties. Don't worry. What's up with you and Tyler talk. and the booty story? No, nah, we good. Don't worry. <laughs> There's a man, according to the CBC, who ate 40 rotisserie chickens in 40 days because he said it felt like the right thing to do. And now, well, first of all. Is he in the hospital? <laughs> is he dead? They said that he could barely, after the journey, he was in a lot of pain yeah. throughout the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was in a lot of pain. Yeah, it left him traumatized, he said. That's yeah. his exact word. Left words. his colon traumatized. He truly said he felt like the right thing to do, though. Not sure why, but he said he felt compelled by some deep force inside of him. And he became yeah. known as no, the no, no. Philadelphia the, chicken Yeah, man. the deep force is called stupidity. <laughs> It's a deep force inside of him called being dumb. He literally had no other explanation other than that. Because there is no other explanation yeah. other than that. And now he can barely think of birds. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he sees a pigeon, he has, he has such a... He goes... <laughs> By the time he got to 40, he had a fan base that were crowd chanting, eat the bird. You know, on the 40th. So, so there were people out here <laughs> endorsing this. After this, a while, this, yeah. Okay. Unlike, <laughs> unlike, unlike the the couple, this is actually an important story. Yeah, he started using his celebrity, you know, image to encourage people to donate food to the city's hungry and things like that. But he wanted to take advantage of the attention, and you know, they asked him if he'd ever eat one again, and he said, "No, he wouldn't. He's traumatized." <laughs> this, this, the world is full of stupid people. <laughs> People who will eat 40 chickens. In 40 days. And people who will become fans of someone who eat 40 chickens. and Real fans. Yeah. It, it, I, that's why I always say, just because you're popular mm-hmm. doesn't mean you're significant. <laughs> we learned that. Definitely. I mean, that it's, it's just, this is terrible. Yeah, no. This is really bad. People spend their times doing these the time doing I mean, these be, I, you 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 you're into social media more than me. Mm-hmm. I'm not into it at all. Yeah, I try not to be. Into like, I post, love, I post. I, I'm not into it at all. Yeah. Um, but but here's my question: Are people that desperate to be famous? Many people. Are, are you we, know, I don't think it's about the fame as much as it is about being liked by somebody. And what comes with being popular is the assumption that people like you. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's a scary, slippery slope for people to walk because now you're doing something and you don't even know what you're really chasing because what comes with fame, as you know, there's a lot of things that ain't got nothing to do with being liked by nobody. Mm. You know what I mean? And people are walking down this road not knowing what really is at the end of it. So we're we're just that desperate to be liked, to be embraced, to mm. be... It's not even to be loved, to be liked. Mm. It's a difference. That we will eat 40 chicken. What is it? How many chickens did the man... 40 make? rotisserie chickens in 40 days. In 40 days. <laughs> That's a lot of meat, a lot of birds. Well, it's also a lot of sorrow. A lot of sorrow. A lot of despair. Because he put himself through pain throughout the whole thing, though, just not because... Not him, like... but just, you know... <laughs> I'm 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 in the metaphysical level, right? I'm I'm having this existential moment, and you down, hey, I'm still thinking about this dude smashing on forty bits <laughs> on Boston you know, markets. I've, I've transcended. I've trans. I've taken this man and made him a metaphor for the human. Kid. And you down here like forty drumsticks. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> 40 wings. I mean, when you come on, <laughs> we talk about 40 yard birds. <laughs> Ooh. This is so confusing. I truly enjoy this. I'm not going to lie to you. 
<laughs> you ready for this next one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I don't think you're ready because you talk about stupidity. You're going to really think the human race is... This entire show <laughs> is rooted in the stupidity. You know, I really try to make sure of human I find beings. things that are going to make you feel, you know, that way because it truly is amazing that these people exist in the first place. And I feel like you just got to know or else you wouldn't believe it. You know, these are real stories. Okay. Let's go to this next one. You're not going to believe it. According to Fact Central, Fact Central, 7% of all American adults not kids, believe that chocolate milk comes from brown cows. God. So you want to know what the number is on that? 7%? What that actually yeah, is? Yeah. 16 and a half million people. Believe that chocolate milk comes from brown cows. <laughs> you know, they already make fun of us. You know, as a country for Let's being say, illiterate. Who's us? Who's us? As a country. <laughs> Americans, you know, okay. They make fun of Americans for being illiterate on a lot of topics, but this one, I think, is one of those ones that bites the cake. Actually, the term is takes the cake. Takes the cake, yes. bites the cake. See? <laughs> Prime example. Look, I'm illiterate but, in even the damn term. <laughs> this is real? This is real. Does anybody in this room... And I'm talking to the two other people in this room. Do either of you believe that chocolate milk comes from brown cows? Raise your hand. Probably not now. He raised his hand. He raised his hand. He's like me. I do. I mean, I, who are these people? I just did it. Who are these people? Who, be, who, who are these people? You found one. No, he doesn't believe that. He's just, <laughs> he's just being facetious. Yeah. Well, check this out. According to old stories, one Department of Agriculture st uh, study so, uh, found out that in the early 90s, one in five adults didn't know that hamburgers were even made from beef. So there's a lot of things that show us history in our country. We just haven't been educated on and people are just misinformed and go throughout their whole lives without being told the truth about the stuff that they're put putting in their bodies, though. I mean, listen, it's nobody's job to tell you yeah. that a hamburger is made out of beef. <laughs> Okay, I, I, it's nobody, you should know that for yourself. Yeah, you should. You should care about what's going but on. But Americans body. lack curiosity. Mm -hmm. Americans lack a certain circumspection. Yeah, and Americans lack uh, a, a fundamental desire for knowledge and wisdom. We want facts and information. Yeah, which are not the same thing. And if you have 16 million people who think that about chocolate milk. <laughs> I so mean, imagine the other topics that they believe in. If you believe that, uh, but no, 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 because you, because you know, you're not, you're not even grasping the depth of this. All yeah. right, let me get comfortable. <laughs> this is a failure of parenting. Yeah, this is a failure of the school system. Yeah, I was gonna say education. Education. Yeah. This is a failure of the church. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> right? You got the priest on the altar pulling buildings. He need to be in the pulpit teaching his flock. That chocolate milk comes yeah. because you put powder in the milk and make <laughs> it chocolate. I mean, milk. this is a failure. There's no way you should get to be of a certain age. I bet you the poll for strawberry milk was even higher. <laughs> this makes me so sad for my country. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm grieving. I'm for, willing to bet if I'm we grieving Google. grieving for America. I bet you there's more people that would believe strawberry milk came from a pink cow, too. Because it'd be like, oh, America, be America. You're a great country, but sometimes you're not. Not the sharpest <laughs> knife in the drawer. Some, so, sometimes you're not brilliant, okay? But we love you. Tell America you love America. Come on, tell it. Man. Wow, you're not going to tell America you love America? I mean, I love America. Yeah, I do. I love my country. But we love it critically. We're just about as sharp as a bowling ball. We love ball, America critically, all. okay? <laughs> we love America. We're just critical lovers. Yeah, we... Okay? It's a little conditional. And I don't feel bad about that. You know why? Because hmm. 16 million people think Believe that, that chocolate milk comes from brown cows. I don't think they deserve the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really bad. It's very bad. It's kind of embarrassing. I'm not going to lie. I have that's no kind of. Yeah, I have secondhand embarrassment. I'm not one of the people, but I still somehow feel embarrassed by it. I don't know. And we putting it on TV, so, <laughs> so we, we ain't just, no better. We just, we, we just <laughs> letting them know how dumb well, it really is. We just added to the people yeah. who know this fact. Man, it's sad. 
Yeah. It's sad, but hey. Just go show you could be great and stupid at the same time. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 Great country. So a lot of stupid people. I mean, there's people that spend their time doing things like this on this very last story that we're about to do that pretty much sum up exactly why I'm sure that statistic that we just read is as high as it is. According to WFTV, this is a Florida story, by the way. Florida woman sues Velveeta's parent company <laughs> because of the amount Wait, of time. You just started laughing in the middle of your sentence. You couldn't even get it out. That's the, one of the most amazing things about you is that you will break out into a giggle. Because <laughs> like, it doesn't sound serious coming out of my mouth, and I'm trying to be serious about it, and I'm like, wow, somebody really, it, it all just hits me as I hear it coming out of my mouth. Okay, well, go ahead. You ready? Okay. So a Florida woman is suing Velveeta Cheese because she says that she wouldn't have bought their mac and cheese if she knew that it took longer than three and a half minutes in the microwave to make. So she won $5 million. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, that, that, that's definitely the last. That's the last story for the episode. For statutory. That has to be the last story. the damages plus interest and costs. No. No, no, no. No, 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 no. So, you know, <laughs> she, she's trying to accuse them of violating federal laws against deception and unfair advertising, you know? <laughs> And this is like a real situation. Like she really is taking them to court for this. And this is like something Velveeta has to sit and spend time dealing with. Because it said that it would be ready in three and a half minutes on the label. Apparently it took longer than that. And she wants to sue them for $5 million. She wants $5 million. If she wins, but what she, would you say? Well, she won't. What would you say if she won? The what would be the reason why she would win? The judge is smoking crack. <laughs> Right, the judge is doing meth with the monks. Yeah, that's the only, there's no reason. And lifting weights with the priest. And lifting weights with the priest, <laughs> or having anyway. There, yeah. there, there's, there's no, there's no reason why this woman should win. Should no, no, she shouldn't. Yeah. Right. I mean, because there's no hard fast claim. You know. Yeah, that, she didn't even have out there about how long it actually took her. She just said it was longer than three and a half minutes. I need five Well, that's a great point. Because we, we, how do we know how long it actually took? It actually took. Mm -hmm. I mean. And I feel like everybody's microwave is different too. Okay, that's a whole. Wow. It's a variable. Wait, wait, you see how serious he just got? I see everybody's microwave is different I too. mean, your wattage could be at, you know, an eight or a seven instead of the 10 and you wouldn't even know and you're just over here wasting your time. Are you really going to try to turn this into... <laughs> Uh, I like playing devil's advocate uh, with you. Are you because... gonna turn this into a like an investigative report? No, I just like playing devil's advocate, you know. No. Just to hear what you're gonna say about it. That this is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And, it this, is. and this woman has lost her mind. She's lost her mind, but the fact that Velveeta has to even send somebody to represent them on the behalf of something like this is crazy. Never underestimate mm. a person's willingness or capacity to be underhanded. And ridiculous. Yeah. We can't after this show. There's, I mean, <laughs> shit, I think this definitely blew the ceiling off of that. For there me. is no bottom to the bottom. Yeah. No. All right. Yeah. Listen, everybody. Thank you for being a part of the episode. <laughs> I've composed myself since the last one, and I can actually do the closing today. <laughs> Good to have you. Hope you had an amazing time with us. These stories aren't just stories. They're real happenings in the world. We just hope that they never happen to you. See you next time. Later. Hey, everybody. Thank you for watching. We always appreciate you taking the time to be with us. If you like what you see, and I know you do, make sure you subscribe right here. Like it, share it, become a part of the movement. Because this is a movement. Movement of joy. Good feeling. McMillan and Morrow. Judge Dad verdicts. Saying too much right now. <laughs> what am I saying?